All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Here in lovely blue sky, sunny San Diego, a bit quiet outside as you can imagine as we're all in full lockdown here in, in California. So wherever you're tuning in from around the world, hope you're staying safe. Hope you're actually enjoying this uh, maybe um, unexpected family time. And I'm joined by Eric Bloom, who is in Massachusetts. How are you doing, Eric? Good, thanks. Now, I'm all jealous of the nice warm weather you have, though. I don't know if I want to answer yeah. your questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you some pictures. Uh, so anyway, uh, Eric is the executive director of the IT Management and Leadership Institute, a TEDx speaker, former president of the National Speakers Association, um, and the Amazon number one best-selling author of Productivity-Driven Success, Hidden Secrets of Organizational Efficiency. And he's also written four other books as well. So today we're going to talk about influence and productivity in the workplace. Uh, okay, uh, I mean, obviously under different circumstances, this might have been a little bit of a different conversation. But today, um, especially given the, the situation we're in, uh, and as companies are grappling with how to remote work and all of this kind of thing, how what, what would your advice in, in, to them and how to be productive and how to organize themselves and approach the situation for maximum productivity and to kind of keep everything running as smoothly as possible? Okay, that's a great question. Let me answer it first for, say, the managers and then for the individual yeah. workers. From a management perspective, the best way to think about working virtually from a productivity perspective is to do exactly those great business principles that you're doing when you're with people. Yeah. The difference is, is that when you're at distance, whether they're working at home or whether it's just quite frankly a virtual team, is that management becomes much of the techniques that you would do, that you would do just by default, like saying hello to someone walking in the hallway and asking them for status on a project, it has to be much more tactical, strategic, and you have to be disciplined to actually do it. Uh, on one side, it's really little things, like if you go to a meeting uh, and someone's virtual or now maybe many of your team people are virtual, you just have to remember to, to mail them the agenda because you can't hand it out to everybody in the meeting. Mm -hmm. So look at virtual management techniques as just good management techniques on steroids. The reason being is, is that you just need to be more, you know, more deliberate in those deliveries. Yeah and, and just, yeah, and before you go on to individuals, because I think what you just outlined there is whether your organization after, is already virtual or whether your organization is virtual right now, or whether your organization is going to remain virtual or go back to being more physically located, everything that Eric just outlined there are things you should be doing anyway. Um, and think of the product, even if you go back into a physical, uh, a physical environment later, um, getting to the point, being strategic, having agendas in, in, before meetings, like eliminating all that, that waste or the, the not preparing properly because uh, I could do it. You know, I can walk into the meeting and I can write the agenda up on the board, but you don't get give people the time to prepare. So these are all great things that you should do anyway. And I think it's a great time uh, to learn these productivity uh, enhancers. Yes, in fact, it's interesting that where uh, moving now to virtual teams is most difficult is for new managers because they mm -hmm. have not yet developed the fine business processes and techniques that they've internalized over a number of years as management people that now they're just sort of redeploying the delivery of the mm -hmm. concepts as opposed to learning the concepts. Absolutely. So for, for the individual... <clears throat> For an individual, you know, it's really interesting. First of all, is that if you haven't worked at home, you know, for any length of time, you know, there are lots of issues that are against you with it. Uh, say, for example, now all the kids are home too. So if you have little kids running around, you know, if you have four dogs that bark at every truck that's going down the street, um, you may not have an office set up that's properly mm -hmm. prepared, you know, preparing you to do it. So you're trying to do it at the kitchen table, which means you're moving, you know, like the oranges to the left, you know, and uh, the dirty dishes to the right to plunk your laptop in the middle of it. It, you know, it can be really, uh, it can really degrade from your ability to maintain your concentration. So as a result of that is, is that when working at home, the first thing you need to do is find yourself a really good spot. And it's a spot that you only do for work. The reason is, in fact, they even teach this to high school kids, is mm -hmm. always do your homework in the same place. 
doesn't matter where that place is, as long as it's appropriate, you know, there's good lighting and ventilation and all that kind of thing, you're in a comfortable chair. But the reason is, is if that's the only thing you do at that spot, when you then go and sit there, is, is that your mind is mentally prepared for doing that task here. So yeah. that that's a good way to to go about it. The other thing is yeah. is that you know if yeah, you're just, introverted or oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, sorry. I just want to on on the draw um, underline what you just said there because I think it, it is critically important. And I think for people working at home for the first time, I think the other thing is you got to have a conversation with your family. If you have a family, if you live in your own family, or your roommate, if you're sharing whatever it is, mm -hmm. just have a conversation and just say, okay, I have to work. This isn't a mini vacation. And yeah, I understand little kids. It's tough, but if you you can figure out a way of explaining to them to you know, mommy or daddy, whatever is working, I, I think that that's critical. And as you say, finding the right place. And I would also say, it's critical that you prepare for work as you would normally. So get up. Get. Would you walk into the office unshowered, unshaven? in a pair of dirty sweats, right? And put your feet up on the table. Probably not. So maybe, maybe you have a, maybe some people have a business like that. And if so, well then continue to do that. But for the majority of people act like you would as if you were in the office, because if you don't properly prepare yourself for the workday, you are in a different mind space and it doesn't matter how disciplined you are. If you're sitting there in sweats and you haven't showered, you're not in work mode. Absolutely. A hundred great advice. Uh, one other thing let me also pass along is that obviously John and I are very used to being on video. Mm -hmm. Look at our backgrounds. Mine is blank. I have a literally have a full blank wall behind me. I have a stand up desk. Uh, my wife mm -hmm. told me that, uh, that uh, sitting was the new smoking. So I had to get one of these. I love it. But because mm -hmm. I have a black wall, a blank wall behind me, I can actually go up and down uh, and my background looks exactly the same. Look at John's background. You know, it's uh, specifically defined as branding for his firm. Mm -hmm. Now, so the reason that I tell you this is when you go home and you're going to be in a video meeting with your boss, check to see what's on the wall behind you. Uh, you know, don't make sure that there's nothing up there that you wouldn't want hanging in your cube. Everything mm -hmm. from, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, old, cl you know, clothes hanging to dry to posters that would be very inappropriate, let me say, for the workspace. Another thing is, is most people from home, their desk is against a wall. You know, when they, they stand there and they work, which means when the video is facing them, guess what it's looking? Potentially, certainly to the rest of the room and potentially down the hallway. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for you to also, if you have family members, you know, in the house to let them know that you're on video because the last thing in the world that you would want while you're on video with your team members is to have your spouse walking, you know, scantily clad down the hallway. So, I yeah. mean, it sounds like ha ha, but I mean, that's enormously embarrassing stuff. Uh, on the on yeah. the brighter side is if your dog or cat hops up on your lap and shows you know and you know looks into the screen nobody's gonna care yeah no i think that's uh, that's great advice i i actually have for for my home office i have a a light it's a uh, that sticks on the door it costs about three bucks i can't remember it's battery operated and i turn it on to red when something's happening, so people know not to come into the room to disturb me. So I just think little things like this, and your advice, yes, make sure about, yeah, you don't have to have a background like this. You can have a blank wall like Eric does. Just find somewhere. And the, I, mean, I think the other important thing is, now that you're remote, and say you're, say you're a salesperson and you're, you're prospecting or, or whatever it is, even if it's only for a couple of moments at the beginning, switch on your camera, humanize the, the, the interaction, and then you can switch it off afterwards. But I'm telling you, the person on the other end will really appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. Particularly if you've never met them in person before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're on video with someone for the first time, it just makes it much more familiar. Like, uh, for example, John and I, let's say that we worked for months uh, just emailing back and forth yeah. an occasional phone call. The mere fact that we're doing this webinar together is next time we, we just email back and forth, it's going to feel more personal because we've had that you know, connect the name with the face moment. Yeah. And I would just say to people who go, oh, I don't feel comfortable going on camera. Um, I've got, I've got uh, just one piece of advice for you. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. No one likes how they look on camera and no one has, likes how they sound on audio. Exactly. So just get over it because it's, I guarantee you, the upside is you, you'd be surprised at the upside of actually connecting and putting on your camera. Like I said, you don't have to keep it on for the whole time. Um, so what are some other pieces of advice you would have on 
how to operate as productively as possible. Okay. Is that um, for those people who don't use to-do lists or, or things along that line, um, what I'd say, particularly in this environment, uh, that's good to do. There's a number of different, you know, let me just actually back up a step even and say, mm -hmm. if you've never studied time management techniques, that can drive your personal productivity more than anything. Right. You know, whether it's something that I've come up with, which is, you know, like task, which is like four zones of personal productivity, where you're either at the top of your game, you're, you're alert, but not creative, sluggish, or basically keeping awake. Um, or if you look at things like the, in basically the way that it works is you take a task based on your current level of energy. Um, or if you look at the Eisenhower, you know, it's a four square where it basically says, you know, what's important, you know, is it important or non-important or is it um, uh, urgent or non-urgent? And it helps you from a prioritization perspective, figure out what to work on. But the bottom line, a lot of people will say to me, oh, you know, I don't know what to work on first. Everything is urgent. Well, the truth is if everything is urgent yeah. or everything is highest priority, nothing is prioritized. Exactly. So find processes that work for you uh, to basically figure out either what to work on when um, or to uh, tie to what is the most of, of important um, from a prioritization perspective as it ties to those people you're serving, your boss, your customers, etc. Exactly. And then I think a good thing always is to validate, is to go back every so often, I call up your, your manager or whatever, communicate with them and say, okay, are these, is this still the correct prioritization for what I should be doing uh, and, and, and realize that your priorities do change, but you're 100% correct. If you don't have, if you can't prioritize things and everything is just is equally urgent, then, then nothing is urgent. But I love your idea about organizing yourself. And I think this is key, uh, especially for people new to working remotely for however long you may be working remotely, is that you have to dis be disciplined and organize your time. So as we were saying about when you're picking your space, uh, the, the family room where the TV is on, at the best, because you know you may be tempted to switch it on and put on the closed captions and think, oh yeah, I can multitask, well you, you know, you can't. Uh, let's not fool ourselves, but um, I do think that time management is critical and try to be as disciplined as possible because the temptation is like, oh, I'll take a break here, I'll take a break there, oh, maybe I'll go out early and I'll do this or whatever. The more loose you get with your time, the less productive you're gonna be. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, another technique is to really, um, uh, you know, if you now again, if you're working at home is know yourself. There are those mm -hmm. people like, for example, if you're not motivated, you'll always find something else to do. You're yes. working, but oh, you know, I'll walk the dog again, or oh, I'll do this, or oh, I'll do that. Oh, I think the laundry is done. And then, you know, you're half an hour away. That's one extreme. The other extreme is if you're extremely disciplined and maybe have a little too much you know, work orientation toward yourself, it's really, really easy for you to just always work. You mm -hmm. know, five minutes before, five minutes after dinner, you say to your spouse, oh, I just have one email that I have to send. You know, you, you walk two doors down, you know, you, you get in your office and next thing you know, it's 1130 at night. Mm -hmm. So the type of discipline is from both perspectives. And you know what? If you're home more with your kids, you want to work and such, take a little bit of an advantage of it too. You know, that's okay. Yeah. You know, instead of talking to someone in the, you know, at the water cooler, so to speak. Not that I've ever seen people actually talk at a water cooler, you know, but that yeah. kind of thing. You spend that time with your kids, you know, take it, let it be a mental release from your work so that when you go back five minutes later, you're actually more productive. Yeah, and, and I, I, I agree with that. I think knowing yourself is absolutely critical. And, and I think if you're one of those people who says, oh, yeah, I just can't work from home, and you're working from home right now, again, get over it, just figure out how you can, how you can do it. It may not be your preference for the long, the long run. Um, but also, I think to your point uh, is just let people know. Because here's the thing I think the biggest issue with re re remote working is, you know, if we're in an office together and I can glance over there and I can say, oh, there's Eric's in his office. He's doing something. Maybe you have your phone on do not disturb, but I can see you. In, in, a, in a remote environment, people just, I don't know, human nature, sometimes they just tend to think the worst. Like, oh, I, I, tried to, I tried to call Eric on Slack and I couldn't get him. I bet you he's goofing off, right? So the, thing, the easy thing to do that is to let people know what you're doing. Um, say, um, I blocked off this time right now because I'm writing a proposal, right? Or whatever. Or uh, I've decided to take an early lunch. I'm going to go from this time to that time. The more you communicate, the less of, less issues come up. 
Absolutely. How did you know I was goofing off? No, just kidding. <laughs> but, but yeah, absolutely. People will feel that a lot, particularly people that are very either conscientious about their job or people who mm -hmm. feel like their job is a little bit in peril. Mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, does, does the boss know that I'm working? So just, yeah. you know, drop emails to people through the day, you know, you know, just to don't send like 10 in the morning. You know, if you have emails right. you have to send out throughout the day, send them throughout the day, you know, tie into Slack a little bit. But you're right. Is those kind of things just to make you feel better about yourself when quite frankly, you know, my, uh, my mother-in-law has this great expression that I love. It's um, don't, uh, don't worry about, don't worry about the 10,000 eyes that are not upon you. Ah, that's a really good, that is excellent, excellent advice. And yeah, I think that that's great advice. And just worry, you know, make sure that you're being productive and make sure that you're communicating and that people, and that you're available. Uh, and when you're not available, let people know that you're not available and then everything starts to run smoothly. And one of the things I can, as I was saying to Eric before we come on air, our company, we've, we've worked remotely for six or seven years now. And we did it as a deliberate choice at the beginning. And we have found, and this is just some encouragement, we have found that some of the connections are, are deeper. Uh, we were more efficient. Um, I, I have, I have, I am more connected and more uh, both, you know, professionally and even personally in some degrees with people I've worked with remotely than people I sat in offices with for seven years. Yeah, I would totally agree. We're a virtual firm also uh, have a, uh, an admin person that's only about three towns over from us, right. but I see her physically maybe once a year at our holiday yeah. party. Uh, my uh, virtual assistants are in the Philippines. You know, I have trainers at different locations around yeah. the country, some of which I've never met. But you're right. If you do it right and you meet with them on video and uh, you just are willing to share a little bit about yourself as you would if you're in the cubes next to yeah. each other, you really can develop true, you know, strong professional and in some cases even, you know, personal relationships. Some of these people I feel I know better than my next door neighbor. Yeah, and some to be honest with the collaboration tools nowadays, even if it's just Google Docs or whatever. I mean, I find uh, I can work with people across the world very quickly. We just get on together, get something done, fix it up, move on, and it's and it's extremely extremely efficient. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Eric, this has been great. Uh, before we go, is there any last tips you'd like to give to people on how to stay productive? Um. Ooh, good question. Uh, let me say is that yes, is that take care of yourself too is that mm -hmm. some people who want to be productive, they drive themselves really, really hard to be as productive as possible. Take a little time to recharge your batteries. You know, if you're working on things as a knowledge worker, where you're, you know, more conceptual and strategic for those thinking, that actually works best when you're sitting down and you're relaxing. So understand that relaxation time, you know, can still be of great value from a business perspective. Don't be mm -hmm. one of those people that when you're relaxing, you feel, you know, you feel guilty that you're not working. And when you're working, you feel guilty that you're not relaxing. <laughs> you know, break that cycle and understand that both are important, not only to your health, but to your overall office productivity. Yeah, that's great. That's great advice. Um, and all of Eric's information will be in his contributor bio and links to his website. But before we go, Eric, just tell people a little bit more about yourself and what your organization does. Oh, thank you. As you've heard, uh, actually, I have two organizations, but interestingly tied to both of our different mm -hmm. topics. One is the uh, IT Management Leadership Institute, where we provide leadership and interpersonal communication type, uh, type classes, primarily to uh, technologists such as IT professionals. Uh, the new part of our company, which was, uh, which was great, it's actually officeinfluence.com, uh, based on a, a book that I wrote. We have surveys, classes, et cetera, um, and assessments on how to enhance your, um, your office influence or your influence within the workplace. Fantastic. All right, listen, this has been great, timely. Uh, so again, everybody listening and watching out there, stay safe, um, stay healthy, look after yourselves, look after your families. Listen, Eric, same to you, stay safe, uh, look after your loved ones and Thank you again for joining me this morning. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeline CRM. See you all for another expert interview with you soon. Thank you.